Hello, this is Ron Paul with your weekly update for Monday, November 22nd. President Biden's approval numbers are dropping like lead. According to the polls released last week, only 36% of Americans approve of Biden's performance as president. From COVID to the economy to foreign policy, Biden's numbers are in the tank. Three out of four Americans are dissatisfied with the way things are going in the country today. Inflation is sky high. Gasoline prices are higher than they've been since Obama was president. And the store shelves are empty just in time for Christmas. And the president's illegal and immoral vaccine mandates may in result in millions leaving their job rather than accept the experimental COVID shots. That should be no wonder for supply chain problems in the U.S. Biden's ability to drag the economy back from the brink is very limited, and the Democrat brand is looking more and more like poison as the U.S. moves into midterm election season. That can be dangerous. When presidents make war, they find that political opposition dries up and the media rolls over in gratitude. In Biden's eyeing foreign actions to bolster his sagging support back home. Traditionally, uh, progressives have been wary of aggressive U.S. foreign policy, but four years of phony Russia gate lies have left a good deal of the political left enamored with the CIA, the FBI, and warmongering woke military officers, just like Joint Chiefs of Staff Mark Milley. Many of them will likely cheer a military conflict. When it comes to foreign policy, the Biden White House continues some of the worst policies of the previous administration. The U.S. continues to sail warships through the South China Sea. When such saber-rattling provokes Chinese concern, the Chinese are condemned as the aggressors. Similarly, the U.S. just sent warships into Russia's backyard in the Black Sea to perform military maneuvers. Imagine Russian war games off the Texas coast in the Gulf of Mexico. And then the U.S. administration attacked Russia for massing troops inside Russia. The U.S. media is, as usual, complicit in the propagandizing the U.S. population. Thus, Russia is said to be massing troops near Ukraine without the explanation that near Ukraine is actually within Russia. So Russia is threatening war by holding military exercises within its own borders. But the U.S. is entirely peaceful when it sends warships thousands of miles away to the Russian border. On Friday, the Russian military intercepted U.S. warplanes reportedly just 12.5 12.5 miles from the Russian border. The U.S. and NATO continues to deliver lethal weapons to the government in Kiev, which only emboldens Ukrainian President Zelensky to ratchet up the conflict in eastern Ukraine. The U.S. foreign policy and military establishment exists in an echo chamber. They believe their rhetoric that the rest of the world is eagerly awaiting its orders from Washington and that the U.S. has the moral right and the ability to tell the rest of the world what to do. This sets the stage for a potentially catastrophic miscalculation in the U.S. administration. Already, Russian President Putin complained last week that the U.S. takes its red lines too lightly, no doubt referring to Ukraine. Biden may be calculating that he needs a nice little war to boost back his numbers and rally Americans to his support. Like most everything else in this first year of the Biden administration, it would be a terrible mistake.